Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, get equal substrings within budget. We're given two strings of the same length and an integer max cost. Consider this example where the max cost given to us is equal to three. So the question we wanna know is how large of a substring can we take from S and transform it into the same corresponding substring in a T. So for example, this substring corresponds to here. And if we want to change this one to this one, we have to change this A to a B and this B to a C and this C to a D. The catch here though is it's gonna take us some cost to change each character. And in this problem, we're taking the ASCII value of lowercase a and the ASCII value of lowercase b, taking the difference between them and then getting the absolute value because we don't wanna deal with negative integers. So in this case, it's gonna be one. This one is going to contribute to our total cost. So initially our cost was zero and now our total cost, changing it to a B, is going to be total cost of one. So we just want to stay within this budget and we want to try to create the largest substring that matches in both strings. Let's try to think about the brute force and then see if we can optimize it at all. First of all, just to simplify this problem, let's do a little bit of pre-computation. I'm gonna take both strings and I'm just gonna take the difference between each corresponding pair of values. So the difference between A and B is gonna be one, B and C is gonna be one, C and D is also gonna be one, D and F is gonna be two. Now, just in case you're wondering how am I calculating those differences, differences, well, just think of it as this A, B, C, uh, D, E, F. I don't want to talk too much about like what ASCII values are, so I'm just going to kind of give you the very simple explanation. The difference between two characters is pretty much just like the distance between them in this string. So A and B, the distance is one, obviously. What's the difference between D and F? Well, the distance between those two is going to be two. Now that we have this, we kind of don't even have to think about like the original string. So just this is kind of the more simple way to think about it at least for now. So now consider this, let's just go through every single substring. So this substring has a cost of one. So of course we can stay within our budget. This substring has a cost of two, we can stay within our budget. This substring has a cost of three, we can again stay within our budget. This is the longest string so far, by the way, right? Like the length of it is what determines the result that we want to return. We're not returning the cost, we're returning the length of that string. In this example, it just happens to be the same. Then we try the next one, this one of length four, but the total cost of that is five, right? We're getting the cost by taking the summation of these values. So this one doesn't work and pretty much like even if there were additional values here, one, two, three, whatever, we're not gonna find any substring starting from here that is now going to be valid because all these values are gonna be positive or maybe they're gonna be zero. But basically if this one is not valid, nothing bigger than that is gonna be valid. Then we would continue our brute force. Now let's get all substrings starting from here. So this one, this one, this one, and we'd keep doing that. You might kind of notice that there is a bit of repeated work here. While the solution, this brute force solution does work, it's gonna be O of N squared because that's roughly how many substrings there are gonna be here. But like I said, by the time we got here, we know this is invalid, right? So why do we decide to start back here from the beginning and then try to build longer substrings when we don't need to? We already found one of size three. We tried one of size four. It didn't work out for us. How about we just shift from the left? How about we take that shortcut and now consider this substring? The reason we skipped this one and this one is because even if those two were valid, they would never be the result. We already found one of size three. Now we're trying to find another one and we're trying to shift from the left as little as we can to make our window valid. So at this point, if you're familiar with what a sliding window is, you probably are convinced that that is the solution to this problem, which it is. So that's how we're gonna solve this problem. From here, what we would do is shift left here. So now we're gonna be here. This is still invalid though. We're gonna keep track of what the total cost is. Right now it's four. Again, we're gonna shift left and we're gonna decrement whatever value 
we removed from the current window. So now our cost is three. This window is valid, but it's smaller than the previous window that we were looking at of size three. And at this point, we're going to try to increase our window now because we are within the budget. It could be possible there are some zeros over here, but there's not. So we pretty much have exhausted every possibility. So this is the linear time approach. Now, if we create an array like this and we just ignore the two input arrays, it works, but it's extra space. It's linear space. So we actually don't need to do this. I just showed it this way because that's kind of a simpler way to visualize it. We will actually be computing these values on the fly, which is really easy to do just by taking the ASCII values of these and just taking the difference between them and then getting the absolute value between the difference. I think that will make more sense in the code and that will make this a constant space solution. Let's code it up. The main thing here is, first of all, keeping track of like the current total cost. I'm going to have a variable for that. I want to make it like this. I want to spell it like snake case, but that's going to be inconsistent with what the parameter is. So I'm just going to do it this way. And I'm going to declare our left pointer. So this is going to be kind of like the window I was showing you earlier. I know I'm not like entirely introducing to you what the sliding window is. I have plenty of videos on that though. And I have like a course that goes pretty in depth on that as well. Lastly, we know that the result we're trying to return is what the largest window actually is, the largest substring that we can replace. So that is what we're going to try to maximize. That's what we're going to end up returning. So now let's say for our right pointer in the range of every position in the input string, both of them are the same length. So we can do either one here. And what we want to do, like I said, is compute the cost on the fly. What is the cost of this current position that we're adding to our window? Well, let's get the ASCII value of one of the characters from one string, S at index R. And let's get the ASCII value from the other string, T at index R. Same position in both strings, though. And ORD is just how you get the ASCII value. We don't know if this is positive or negative, so let's just get the absolute value. Let's call this the cost. And this is what we're going to end up adding to the current cost. I guess we actually don't need a different variable, so let's just take this and add it to the current cost. Okay, now it could be possible. Well, what we want to do, we want to maximize the result, right? Let's assume our window is valid. This is what we would do. We would set result equal to the max of itself or the current window size. We can compute that by taking the right pointer minus the left pointer plus one. This is how you compute the size of a substring with the two endpoints. So this is what we would do if our window is valid, but it's possible our window could be invalid by adding this new character. How do we make it valid again? Well, first of all, how do we know if it's invalid? It would only be invalid if the current cost is greater than the max cost. If they're equal, that's actually perfectly fine. But if the current cost is greater, that's a problem. While this is the case, because it might take us multiple characters to remove to make the cost valid. So while this is the case, we we are going to shift the left pointer. We're going to increment the left pointer by one, but we don't want this loop to run infinitely. So before we actually increment the left pointer, let's subtract from the current cost, the cost of that character, which again, we can just compute on the fly. I'm going to copy and paste this part over here, but Remember, we're not removing the right character, we're removing the left character. So let's change these pointers to left here and left there. So believe it or not, this is the entire code. I'll run it to show you that it works. And you can see it works, it's pretty efficient. In case you're not convinced that this is a linear time, some people say, well, you have nested loops, that must mean it's n squared. No, because our right pointer is gonna iterate over the entire size of the input. Our left pointer is also gonna iterate in the worst case, through the entire string. It's not like we're resetting the left pointer back to zero every single time. Down here, if I put left is equal to zero every single time, then maybe it would be n squared, but we're not resetting it. So this is not n squared. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.